I can call it a raver. And what you tell me about his tweet? So juicy, I think it was about last week. Come on, wild back it all go. Shaggy can come to our tweet. I can say, you know what, guys, I can't live a lie anymore. It was me. Oh, your design. Gosh, I'll see you. Twenty-seven minutes in a cutic after four in the PM officially to me get second Iowa in the whole drive. Me see me guns of the shit disciple. And Zinzi Kibiku. And then guess what? Kuna bazenga me kujenda ni studio. In a suit? Deadly. Uh huh. This is the next president for all we know. <laughs> Number one. Number two. Ati, we have to let him go by four fifty-five. It doesn't happen. Man. It doesn't happen. It's the request always. like any uh, single child more culture to allow or not. I'm not talking about studio designer politicians. Questions like Shaq were tough to solve. Do, do you want to do the main introduction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. No, you do it. Okay, so this guy, ladies and gentlemen, is not only our boss, but he's a Kenyan award winning journalist. Yeah. Currently working as a strategy and innovation of Kenya television station here at Citizen TV. He's also the chairman of the Kenya Editors Guild. The list is endless, uh -huh. all right? But if you watch News Gang, yeah. you know him. He's the chap with the kicker. <laughs> Right as guy, kind Boss, it's good to have you here in studio. Nice to be here. Mm, you in a suit. Are, are you? Nice? Are you uh -huh. no, what's the dress code for radio? Are you ever not in a suit? Um. Apart from the other day when I saw yes. so you, you not just a suit. Suits. Fitting suits. Fitting, Fitting suits. suits. Okay. Yeah. And you know the dress code for radio, by the way. What's the dress code? Chilled. Yeah. Okay. It depends. I'm not in a dress. The one I had. You should come in suits. I, I, I didn't trust you guys. I thought there'll be a camera in here. So oh. my suit is here and the tie. You know, I've only seen Linus ones without a suit, and that was last week, boss, when we met on the corridor. Every Friday, I don't wear suits on Friday. You really don't? I don't. What do you wear on Fridays? And I don't wear them on Saturday uh -huh. and Sunday. Uh -huh. Your design. Yes. So I'm a bazenga on a kujanga church, I'm a vasuit in Naturingia. On a semanga ni kosababu. See, I to buy suit is Sundays, kosababu to visit on Monday to Thursday. So, like you know, I'm saying a vasuit is Sunday, kosababu is going to be a good one. I'm 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 a good one. But then again, Zito, anyway, to answer your happy. I don't think it's maybe. What's on a good job about work of the media industry? Now, I'm sure that Kita can pack a majuka, Rudy, and Nene. But then again, to put like a bag, because I live in Kwako. Wait, to be clear, I'm a way ni. Under what? I'm a Kwako man. I'm under what fake? I'm under what fake? I'm a one who says we're back. No, I'm a one who says we're back. I came back. <laughs> no, with like an accent. Yeah. You know, I hear you. You know, even Majuzi, yeah. just the other day during the Madalaka Day celebrations, I was at the Narok Stadium in my country of Narok. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nimevaki Masai Kabisa, yeah. Shuka Zango Kabisa, and Lafuni Kafanya Kosa Mojo. Nimevaki Shades. <laughs> so, Nikasikia Jama Moja Kisema, mm. hey, Onene, Ndawo Fake. <laughs> Kwamba Lidani, I'm yeah. not a Maasai because these are shades. The shades, on our shades, na shuka. Aingia. Unakua aingia, unakua tofauti. But ukweli ni kwamba mimi ni mezaliwa in the county of Narok. Yeah. The western end of Narok County. Uh, the Transmara sub-county. Mm -hmm. A place called Osinoni Village in uh, Kilgoris. Wow. Yeah, hey, at this rate, you can even give us your house number. Like, <laughs> just to zoom are, are, you, are you getting the hey, geographical hey. location? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very remote village, especially when I was growing up, it was very, very remote. I remember there were days, um, you know, you'd miss school because the area is full of uh, roaming animals. Wow. Mm -hmm. We're not too far from the Masai Mara National uh, Game Park. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a place that when I was a child, um, uh, teamed with animals in one life. It was very, very nice. I grew up there. I come from a family of ten, five girls, five boys. I'm number six. Your design. It's going is your. Your design, you go to sir. He's studio to Toshi. He's only team Billy's a back here. Yeah, five, five. Yeah. Five aside. <laughs> You're shy one of uh, football. football team. My goodness. All right, so both the, how does a boy from Narok in the village yeah. end up becoming one of the biggest media personalities on the African continent? Um, first, great uh, thanks to God mm -hmm. because he guides uh, our journey. 
Um, I'm a believer in prayer, in the place of God, in the scheme of things Amen. of one's life. He plays a role because uh, you look at where we came from and uh, it's, it's a long journey. Um, number two is uh, working hard, just focusing on what you want to be. Um, I was lucky enough to know quite early what I want to be, that I wanted to be a journalist. Um, and this was shaped by uh, a, a number of factors. One was my own father's um, liking for news and current affairs. Mm -hmm. My father never went to school, but um, in his radio, you can hear him following news. Um, he would tune into BBC Swahili service. Nice. Uh, those days it had two <coughs> bulletins, one in the morning at 6 and one in the evening at 6.30 p.m. Um, he also, because he could read, he's a catechist, so he did adult uh, education and yeah. trained in a bit of reading. Mm -hmm. He would also read Taifaleo mm -hmm. and I'd pick his newspaper and consume it so well, all the details, from Jua Kalulu to the politics and all that. Yeah. So that was the initial interest. This was then shaped by school, and I remember my geography, history, and civics teacher. There was something called GHC. Mm -hmm. I don't know what system you guys do. Ah, I mean, GHC. GHC. Mm -hmm. So GHC, mm -hmm. my teacher was called Samuel Gashui Kimodo, hey. who comes from Odaya in Nyeri County. He's alive and still teaching. I visited him. Shout out to him. I shout out to him, to him and I really, really thank him for the role he played in shaping up especially my current affairs mm -hmm. and history and uh, command of things that were, were happening. By class 6, class 7, I would tell you all the capital cities, who is the president of where and um, currencies and things like that. I was totally comfortable. Um, in class 7, I remember when um, uh, class six rather, some Mora Michelle was uh, was killed in a plane crash. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know those were things that um, the prime minister of Israel then. No, no he no, was so the, the president, president of Mozambique. Mozambique. Yeah. He was coming from a peace meeting in uh, Lusaka, uh -huh. heading back home to Maputo, and something happened on the South African Mozambican border, and the plane crashed, and he was killed. Oh. That's a story I really followed as a as a child. Then the following year, Thomas Sankara was assassinated, president of Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. in October. He was um, inspecting a guard of honor. I was in class seven that time, and um, six or seven, and, and, and he was inspecting a guard of honor and he was shot by uh, some of his people. Yeah. These events, you know, started um, shaping my interest. Because I kept asking, who is that that witnessed it? Who saw it happen? Who is that that actually made it uh, news on radio? And I said, I want to become that person. That was primary school. So Samuel Gashui Kimodo and my father. Come secondary school, Form 1 is a very busy year for obvious reasons. Those days, Kulikona Kitunaito Mono. I want to say, Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do manual labor, clean up, and all that. So for one, for me, passed quite easily. Well, a difficult one. Then from two, my interest in writing and reporting events started taking a, a practical uh, shape, mm -hmm. and I started writing for. Um, I, I used to actually write articles and pin them on the notice board nice. of the school. So in my own handwriting and pin them there and uh, there'll be about three pages and people will read. Um, sometimes there are commentaries. I think that's why the first kickers uh, happened. <laughs> 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 okay. uh, because I remember one time I was very critical of um, what the prefects were doing and um, denying people the chance to go for preps with Look at you being home clothes. Of this state. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was already saying, no, come on, how do you do that? Right. It's 3 a.m. People are going for preps. 
Do you know how much of sacrifice that is? Mm -hmm. Get out of their business. What they are wearing, do you know what they are wearing when they're sleeping? Mm -hmm. So why should it matter that they're wearing a heavy jacket just to keep uh, warm? Warm. In Kilgoris, which is a very windy and cold place, especially during uh, uh, the cold season, that's July. Mm -hmm. So that was form two. And I started writing and um, reporting football games, Oh, music wow. festivals, drama festivals, <clears throat> and I started enjoying certain journalistic access. Yeah, and I want to thank a teacher called um, Simon Tinega, who was the head of drama. Chogani, Kilgoris Secondary School. Your design. Your design. My <laughs> Jomali. Kilgoris. it after after this. You can yeah, it after this. Okay. And, and you know he would he would uh, always allow me to hop onto the school bus to those events because ostensibly I was going to report and actually did report on those um, events. So by form two, I was doing good, fairly well as a as a journalist. Form three, I became secretary of uh, the journalism club. club. Of course, my chairman was uh, Timothy. Diemo, who is now a very senior military officer in uh, the Kenya Defense Forces. That was my chairman, I was his secretary uh, general. And I served until I left Kilgoris uh, High. After that, I joined the Kenya Institute of Mass Communication and did my journalism, mm -hmm. uh, training in radio and television broadcasting. The rest, as they say, is history here. So, we are. boss, fast forward. A lot of people may not know this, but you shared it with me. Education seems to be something very big towards you because you're still in school. Many people don't know that. You're studying. <clears throat> I'm doing law. You're doing law. I'm doing law now. Yes. Why? Why, with all this success, would you would one go back to school? Uh, what is it about school? What is it about academics? People should never stop learning. Learning should even happen at home. Mm -hmm. Which is why I keep a very big library in my house, and I just thought, come on. Uh, apart from reading, um, why don't I just go back to school? And law for me is very exciting and it's, it's a great value addition to journalism. Mm -hmm. With law, you will be a better journalist, whether in management or in practice, because law exposes you to a lot of reading, a lot of new perspectives, a lot of things, because life is law. So how do you balance being a law student with managing a newsroom? How? How? Are Not you, just a newsroom, the biggest. Yes. Yeah, and still country, being, number one. It's still being a father and a husband. First, <clears throat> empower people to grow. Empower people to do things. The Royal Media Services is home of a combination of many, many talents. There's nothing as easy and as blessed as managing a talented team. They make it easy. You can go and do your law because trust them, they'll do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Give them the parameters, they'll do the right thing. It's not like shepherding them, uh, um, you know, over and over. It's yeah. just give direction and we have a great team. I think, I want to thank the great team that is here because without their abilities and how comfortable they are with some of the roles that they play, and the little guidance they get, probably I'll not have gotten time to do law. Your design to have so Mkosawa Sana, I mean this is a great thing. Your design. So if you're seen of uh to your design. So to touch again that is at Kitaka, but then again me uh giving people room to grow, nurturing them. But then again could have concerns in a go around the country saying that after Ikro Pienu, Akina Lena's Akina Joe, Akina Jamila, eh, Akina Emmanuel. Like, Nika Kutakwana gap. Do people are not convinced that we have a younger crop of journalists who are ready actually to do what you people have been doing? I want you to address that when we come back. And also, Mambuzingiene Kando na low na journalism. Nasikia Piuli kwa general sana kifika ni mambo na kupea na ITM card yako. Eh, ko baby girl. Boss, I told them I kupangia. Naona manipangia kabisa. Kwa deti ya kwanza jo, alipea na ITM card. We'll get to hear from Linus in just a little bit. John Kiana is already in the building with the sports news.
They went on to play very well. But the final didn't reflect them. They also told you, end up just a game tattoo after. You remember? But you know what? <laughs> Took on number three. <laughs> we lost to the finalists. You decide, Silvia. Yeah. yeah. So, in a group, you are getting one, two, three. No, finally, it's not going to give me a good joke now. We're going to have a tattoo. But anyway, PA will support us. No, I'm only at it. Arsenal, you're a supporter, but now I'm a sympathizer. Anyway, this is the latest in the world of sports. Sports, seniors, that is a. Yeah, yeah. Ah, you are looking at it. You are looking at it. I tell you a story of you two. Hey, man, boy, Chelsea. You look at him. Come on, man, shine. Yeah, good then. Capri season. The main sponsors were, but the short sponsors were Barcelona. It was about Japan. Honestly, I thought we could not try any of them. Kombi chesai. Inaweza kwa only trophy. Kaila nyaso ilikuwa inashinda kitambo ile Emirates Cup. Ikatolewa. As well as you know, you know fucking katolewa. Tunasoli moyo anza kuuliza before ni shie. Decision gani she make ile tough sana kwa life yako mpaka uli sit back ukabaki. Ai. How did I even make that decision? The toughest one you've ever made. In journalism, kutakuwa na decisions nyingi na ina hiyo. Nyingi zita kuhusu, na badai in my side, it involved others, meaning I'm making decisions on behalf of other journalists. And my own difficult decision was deciding to go to the war front in Congo during the Seven Nation War and going through Rwanda, Goma, into Eastern Congo, all the way up to, to Kinshasa, because it was a pure risk. And toughest decision also that I made for other journalists was to deploy a team to Somalia during the Operation Linda Inchi launch, because you are putting lives at risk. Those are difficult decisions, and in journalism, there are a lot such decisions that you have to make almost uh, on a daily basis or from time to time. But you never regret it about. No, I don't regret it. <coughs> that, especially when it ends well. I came back safely. The journalists I deployed to Somalia came back safely. And they won awards, actually. And they won awards. But I want to name them here. Okay. They won very good awards because of what they had to do. Yeah. Ah, eu dizia não sei. Nós queríamos ruxar mais a gente de dia. Ruxa bazenga. Qual é o nome? You've said that you're working with a very great team of journalists. Kuna wale ma veteran, kuna wale ma kam. Na juá, madangu ni back to more. Heru lem seta kuambia mas é ini blanda. Shindo leta kuambia. Koto sala. Uta change next time. Mr. Gani, upcoming journalist to make it's easy. That you know now they have to change for them to be better and even better than you guys. Now, he ni career and I think sixty percent of it ni initiative yako manure. Energy yako manure. Um your own personal drive. What I see with current generations, especially the new guys, ni le culture and ni office, ni sanga petunatakiwa. I love Sangapi to Tatoka. Journalism works the same way. It doesn't matter whether you are old generation, new generation, or even future generation. Mm -hmm. It works the same way. It works the emergency, it works the police, security services. You know, you always have to have that drive that takes you beyond the paperwork, beyond the office regulations that tell you report at 8 and, and, and the job ends at what time. Because if you know, the only career you have to do is what you are going to do for the day. Mm -hmm. Then events shape it for you. Alafu, DPP is going to be able to do it for 12 years. What do you do? 
we can't clock out at, at five. That requires initiative. I think what I would encourage uh, is nurturing of that personal drive. Just know that a lot of it is initiative. Because tunaweza kukusukuma sisi wenyewe hapa ki administrative, but kama una initiative, you won't go far. Yeah. So yeah, hizo yeah. energy is kutane yako, initiative yako, na guidance ya kampuni ya ma guidance ya, ya editors. John Kenderton and our next Iowa. Kabisa. We'll pick it up from where Kanda may ask a boss. Now, when I drew previously to your school, your journalism to Konambio, fundamentals are each of you to educate, to entertain, to inform. But then again, Kumekona some sort of, uh, let's say, evolution. Nokapata saizi we have to interrogate, we have to investigate, and then unapata peer advocate sometimes. But then again, what one will is a ikakwaje previously ulkuna pata to me pigot to pressure government officials, unapata other institutions, both government and non governmental institutions. Paka, some people had to resign. Others had actually had to implement policies that uh, were actually leading the country in the right direction. But of late, it's like no matter how much we do, is it that we don't pressure them enough? Or is it that our journalism is just lazy, that there isn't as much uh, impact and change as is expected or as it was way back when uh, you guys were still very energetic? No, it's the society values that are changing. I think the values of society are on a decline because journalism functions with conscience you prick the conscience of society. So you prick the conscience of people in uh, power, and they decide out of what you've said, out of this persuasive investigative piece that has demonstrated beyond reasonable doubt that there was a fault in the execution of a public duty, they resign. These days, values are zippo. Mm -hmm. So even though we because, prick and poke, nothing yes, happens. Yes, you, you see people, uh, I mean, in, a, in our lifetime, you may have, uh, have, have, have encountered situations where uh, government officials mm -hmm. are outrightly outed by the media, mm -hmm. but they don't resign or they don't uh, make good to the public. There's a story that remind you of um, some cabinet minister who said he'd rather die than resign. Yeah, we know him. You know him, yeah? Yeah. So kuna, um, something has changed. If the values of society are weak, then even journalism will uh, will not make a lot of impact. The, because Atuna, we don't have arresting powers, for example, but yeah. we can... He, Kimarer, a road dam is work of journalists. Yeah. They came up with a report in January, February, mm -hmm. that said 21 billion shillings have been misappropriated. Nikazi, yeah? Mm -hmm. But you imagine if we had prosecutorial powers. <laughs> journalists. Journalists would have prosecuted in February, March. But for us, just expose no kuyacha up or somebody else will act upon it. Right. But if society is not responsive, then our work is going to be very, very difficult going forward. Mm -hmm. Listen, these days, they tell us when they disagree with what we do, fake news. Kideri media. Kideri media yeah. Fake news. Yeah. And those who tell us fake news mm -hmm. are actually hiding from the public. They're hiding from the truth. They're running away from the truth. And now they think Trump did it so everybody can do it. Boss, the irony of that statement. Yes. Earlier on, he had asked before Kianda walked in yeah. the difference between um, generations and if there is a gap that is There missing. is. Let me, is let me read to you what someone has just uh, tweeted here in regards to that question. Uh, he goes by the name, uh, he goes by the name Wamutego Jr. And he says, Ata Linas Kekai has made great strides in the media industry we are almost afraid of the gap his generation will leave when they hang the boots or the marks for that matter i don't share the fear because if we leave and there emerges a gap it means we would have failed mm -hmm. because it would have meant that we are not cultivating or nurturing future journalists we are products of previous journalists who did a good job yeah. uh, here. And I want 
uh, with their permission to mention yeah, yeah. Uh, some of those names that really um, shaped our industry. There was uh, Hilary Moreno of Weekly Review. I never worked under him. He was way ge generations ahead of, of, of me, uh, but he was doing the Weekly Review. Washira Waruru, the MD of mm -hmm. this group, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. they were doing the Weekly Review, a great um, weekly that was in quality, and I still would say that to date, was in quality just the same as Newsweek or Time magazine. Very sound journalism. It has never been re replaced. Mm -hmm. There's Masharia Gaitho. These are people we mm -hmm. admired uh, when we were growing up um, the, for their commentaries, their commitment to public interest. So we walk to newsrooms and we find some of them who help us to be what we are today. Isaiah Kabira, the High Commissioner of Kenya in uh, Australia, mm -hmm. was very instrumental in who I later uh, became because he gave me the opportunity to grow. Um, he gave me and Farida Karone, uh, who is now CS Lands, we were uh, in the same newsroom under the tutelage of uh, Isaiah Kabira. Mm -hmm. So, the next generation is the responsibility of the current generation. And that's what I must say to every newsroom reader out there. Don't sit and say, oh, we are better quality and what is coming after us is useless. If it's useless, it's because we would have failed. So from my end, I really believe in nurturing and creating the next generation of, of journalists. Mm -hmm. And in the places I have worked, I can say there are people who grew uh, because I made um, the effort to nurture them. So I, have, I don't share those fears that after us, deluge, no. So boss, what yet stick do you use when it comes to pointing out talent? Because a lot of young people have come and have worked with you. Um, so how do you spot that this one has talent and this is the one that I'd like to groom? What yet stick do you use? First of all, as a um, newsroom manager, you must have patience and give somebody time to go through their cycle. Because it can be crazy. You may not have, it's a bit like that cycle that they roll um, in the casinos. Yeah. So you don't know where... Like the wheel of fortune. Yeah, the wheel of fortune. Don't judge with the first arrow mm -hmm. where it settles. But lazy. I've seen people who transform from people who are perceived as lazy, happy-go-lucky people in the newsroom. They become great journalists. Mm -hmm. Just because managers were a bit more patient. Exercise patience. Don't dismiss them in a week and say, oh, I've tried them and they can't um, uh, function. For me, my style is more of a lot of patience. Give people repeated chances. Mm -hmm. Let them make the mistakes. And watch if they can repeat the mistakes before you make a judgment. Yeah. Uh, so it's about um, practice. And people come around. A lot of the journalists that have succeeded <clears throat> uh, actually uh, turn around kids. Right. They, 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 they overcame certain weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, so, give people a chance. Boss, I'm looking at the time. I know we have to let you go, but very quickly. Mm -hmm. I know you still have your question. Lots of them. That one. Yeah, so many. Boss, we have, you know you have to come back for round two at this rate. Absolutely. Yeah. But very quickly. Yeah. So, what next for someone like Linus Kaikai after you've had such a spanning, successful journalism career and here you are studying law still? What's next? I'm not through with media, that I can tell you. Um, my passion is media, my passion is society, public interest, and I think journalism offers the opportunity to serve that interest uh, in many, many ways. It's dangerous a lot of times, you're profiled, you're threatened, you, you go through a lot, but I think I would like to see that the media cements its place in the Kenyan national life. This is the most challenging phase uh, ever because for the first time you're having people dismissing us as fake news. Mm -hmm. You're having um, the shutdown like we had last year where regulators actually just come and say uh, we don't like your independence and um, switch us off for 10, 15 days. You know those kind of things. I would like to see us overcome that and become an established part of society. It's been on and off. We've been in and out of it. 
and um, the day I'll see the consistency in that, I'll happily go to Transmar and have the cattle. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Before we let you go, <clears throat> you might uh, be lucky today. I may not ask you that question, but then again, there's this one that's burning. You've said there is an aspect of fear when it comes to journalism because you're targeted, especially by those people who might be perpetrators of things that might be impacting negatively on the society. And there is a time you were quoted as calling on regulation when it comes to churches. And you actually had lots of um, uh, people ganging up against you, including evangelical leaders. When it comes to taking such a stance as a journalist, what would be your advice, especially for those young and uh, growing journalists who have issues that they think they need to uh, raise concerns over and also guide in terms of if it's regulation or policy. What should be the approach to ensure, first of all, their life is not in danger, they are not compromised, and also perhaps uh, that which they intended to achieve is actually achieved? A journalist has one sacred duty, and that is to speak truth to power. It's a very, very sacred, solemn duty of every journalist. Just speak the truth. Tell society the truth. We are told, and I agree, we are the mirror of society. Hold the mirror to society. If they think what they see is ugly, if society thinks what is in the mirror is ugly, then it has to come to terms with it. You've done your part. The mirror may be broken in anger, and you are blamed for how that looks, yeah. but stick to the truth. The duty of journalism is telling society the truth. Does it have risks? Yes, it has a lot of risks. Some of them physical. You can actually have a big problem with people who don't like the truth. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to say in the changing times, journalists must resist the idea of what they are calling alternative truth. There is no such thing as alternative truth. There is only one truth. And it is the truth of God, the truth of country, the truth of society, the truth of humanity. You have to be truthful. So there is an element which I would call priestly about journalism. Yeah. Because you cannot also, know, you cannot also preach uh, water and drink wine. Yeah. The Preaching of the truth requires also that your values also align with what you're saying. Because you can't talk the truth and live a lie. It doesn't work. Okay. So, very quickly, are, we gonna, are you going to ask that one last yeah. question? Boss, he's mm, at all Boss he to, uh, for to, you yeah, like this. To, uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I noticed there have been a number of last questions. Yes, yes. So, so you can say me kana kuna ziku jo nitaka ku impress, impress, impress. Wa yours na ukam slap na ATM card. So false. Let's start there. Yeah. True. Aha. Uh -huh. True. True. Let me have helped you. Yes, yes. Olympia ATM card. Yeah, the Trust. Now you date Yeah, but then boss, it was your first date. Trust, yes. Boss, this is your first date with your girlfriend, now wife, and you gave her your ATM card on the first date. Let me tell you, if you're trying too hard to be with somebody, on Doka. Hey, I'll with your boss. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because um, you, you would tell, you would tell, come on into trustworthy. So did she go shopping? Uh, uh, boss, yeah. I think it's what I trust. I think it's what I'm going to do with one of the best things I'm going to do. I'm going to do a door to win her. So did she go shopping? What did she do? No, yeah. she, she, she took care of the ATM. 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 Hey. Okay, no wonder I've done in marriage. A bunch of course, I do party, Patricia. I'm on party, um, pressure. It was in the attic. I will go shopping. Yes, but at least I've told you. So, when I've given a skill is a society, so it's a bit in impact. I'm cut low. So, I was a bit in the initiator. You need to come back. I tell you, go to the shop after 10. I will. So that you're the lame money to me at here. But you may appreciate too, son. I hope you may have fun, Pierre. Next time, you talk about lighters.
Asante sana. It's your design. Time for the news. Say easy with Lil Forandi. I'm Daniel Studio. All right. Yeah. Yeah.